Algebra 1, number 2.10b. We're talking about number properties and proofs. This is the six field axioms for rational numbers. And if you haven't seen the previous video, number 2.10a, please stop. You're going to be very confused. Go to the description of this video for a link to 2.10a, and you'll be able to link right back to this one from that one's description. Okay? So, we now know that the number properties can be field axioms for some number systems. There's six fundamental properties that can be a field axiom for number systems. We've already discussed five of them in previous videos. The commutative property for addition and multiplication, the associative property for addition and for multiplication, the distributive property of multiplication over addition, the identity property of addition and multiplication, and the inverse properties for addition and multiplication. And now we're going to introduce the closure property. So remember that this video's description has links that can help you, okay? So this is for rational numbers, all right? So it says here, for rational numbers, the closure properties of addition and multiplication. For addition, it's a plus b is a rational number. And for multiplication, a times b is a rational number. What does that mean? It means that if you add a rational number to a rational number, you're going to get a rational number. And if you multiply a rational number by a rational number, you'll get a rational number. It says for addition, it guarantees that any rational number added to another one is going to equal a rational number. And for multiplication, it guarantees that any rational number multiplied by a rational number is going to equal a rational number. Now, if this was the closure property of addition and multiplication for real numbers, then we'd have the word real numbers written in here, okay? All right, so we say the set of rational numbers is closed for addition and multiplication, because these will be true. If we have one-third plus one-third, which are both rational numbers, our answer is going to be two-thirds, and that's a rational number. See? So, the six fundamental field axioms for rational numbers are the closure property, which we just discussed, that a plus b is going to be a rational number, and if we multiply it, a times b will be a rational number. Now, this won't work for whole numbers. The set of whole numbers would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if we had 2 take away a 5, it would be a negative 3. And that isn't a whole number, is it? So the commutative property says a plus b can be switched around in order to b plus a. And for multiplication, we can switch the order from a times b to b times a. The associative property says for addition, that we can group the b and c together and then add the a, or group the a and b together and add the c. And for multiplication, we can multiply b and c together first and then multiply a, or multiply a and b together and then multiply c. The distributive property of multiplication over addition says that we can distribute this a to the b and add it to a plus c. The identity property says that if we add a zero to any number, it's going to equal that number. And for multiplication, any number multiplied by 1 keeps its identity, and it stays the same. The inverse property of addition says for each number like a, there's an additive inverse like negative a, so that if you added a to the negative a, it would be 0. And the inverse property of multiplication says for each non-zero a, so it can't be 0, there's a multiplicative inverse. 1 over a, so that a times that 1 over a is going to equal 1. You know, like if we put a little 1 here, see, a times 1 over 1 times a, it's going to be 1. It's going to have the same numerator and denominator. And this inverse for multiplication will not work for natural numbers, whole numbers, or integers. And do you know why? Because natural numbers, whole numbers, and integers don't have a fraction. That's a rational number. And natural numbers and natural numbers don't have a, a negative, and whole numbers don't have a negative, so we can't say this negative a, and natural numbers don't have a zero, so it doesn't work for those, okay? It would work for real numbers because they include all rational numbers, don't they? All right, so which axiom guarantees the truth of this one? Two 
and then a plus 3 in parentheses and equals 2a plus 2 times 3 is the distributive of multiplication over addition. That's the axiom that guarantees the truth of that statement. The associative property of multiplication guarantees the truth of this one. 3x times y is equal to 3 times xy. See? And the inverse of multiplication guarantees the truth that 6 times 1 6 is going to equal 1. Because we could put that 6 over a 1, just like we did here, Can't, couldn't we? And the identity property of addition guarantees the truth for 2 plus 0 equals 2. It maintains its identity when it's added to 0. And the inverse of addition, the inverse property of addition guarantees the truth that negative 7 plus 7 is going to equal a 0. Okay? So... Those are the six fundamental field axioms for rational numbers. And remember, when it's true, then it's a field for that number system, okay? So if the commutative property is true for rational numbers, then it's a field for rational numbers, and it's a field axiom for rational numbers, okay? All right, we're going to continue on to 2.10c and we're going to talk about properties of equality, okay? I hope I'll see you there, and I hope this was helpful. Bye.